Hey guys, welcome to Hasu League from BSL Season 13. This is the round of eight. Phoebus going up against Rancor. Phoebus starting in the upper right hand corner as the red Terran bottom right hand corner. We have Rancor starting as the blue Zerg. And this is going to be, I think, my favorite matchup in the round of eight thus far. Just in general, honestly. Because Phoebus is looking strong. And honestly, in the matches I've seen thus far... Phoebus is currently my favorite to take all of Hasu League. Rancor, fairly close to winning Hasu League last season. Actually, did Rancor win last season? I'm brain farting now. <laughs> Rancor, brutally strong player. And I really like his early, green, early aggressive style. And so seeing early aggressive versus early aggressive in Phoebus... I think it'll be interesting matches. And it could be a real slugfest between these guys. Or it could be whoever gets that really small early advantage just snowballs it immediately into a rapid win from there. Should be a fun one, though. This feels like two cannon... It's, they talk about unstoppable force and immovable object. I feel like this is more like two cannonballs barreling into one another. Overlord first opener. For Rancor, I think he is going to opt for 12th hatch. We do see the front door seal from Phoebus, which I like seeing. No reason not to do it. Initial SCV scout making its way out. We are seeing that hatchery being planted without any harassment. And let's see where Rancor looks like he's going to scout counterclockwise. So both players, or sorry, clockwise. Clockwise scout, counterclockwise scout. So both players going to end up scouting each other last, except for... This Overlord from Rancor making it to the upper right corner. So he is going to see that barracks being planted along the front, which suggests more of an early command center build in a defensive position. Not that Rancor can really respond to it. Spawning pool being built. No gas as of yet for Rancor. Taking it, it looks like, a little bit later at 217. Everything in line for potentially going for a two-hatchery build, drawing his... Drone up. No command center as of yet from Phoebus. Okay, now planting it down after grabbing a little bit of minerals. So one racks into command center. Not even building a marine. Very risky play because he had no scouting information in the midst of this. So he was just going to try to rely on his front door seal and some micro from his SCVs just in case Zerglings were headed in into him. So a little bit of a calculated risk right there. It is going to pay off. Potentially not seeing Zerglings... Somewhere on the map, he's like, yeah, I can get away with this. Grabbing refinery very rapidly. I'm wondering if he's going to opt for that one racks quick upgrade schema. Four Zerglings being produced initially for Rancor. Now, here's the thing for... I, I'm kind of glad he went for a front door seal, just knowing how often Rancor plays a little bit more aggressively. I feel like the two racks opener might be safer against Rancor in particular. Just because Rancor does so often flood aggressive or opt for aggressive play early on. Layer morphing. Phoebe's got a pretty good look at that. So he knows what he's up against. Getting that, yeah, he's going to go Academy first. Try to get stint back, and we'll see if he goes Academy, Engineering Bay, right off the bat. Continuing to produce Marines off that front. A little bit of a pro gamer move, so he moved those... SCVs to the natural expansion, had them preemptively mine, had them wait a second, and then immediately pile in minerals to get a bit of a rapid push there. Unfortunately, Rancor supply blocking himself, it looks like, a little bit here. This is definitely going to hurt his build, and it looks like he's actually going to opt for a three-hatch lurker. So Hydro is stand down, third hatchery down. Now is the supply to fill in. And I'm wondering if that's because of the Overlord blockade and it's just a, an adjustment. Or if he's going to go for... We've seen... Um, yeah. Oof. This this actually might end up playing towards his favor. Because this is a second barracks being built. Stimpak being upgraded. No engineering bay as of yet. But again, it looks like yeah, Ryan Kaur doing similar antics. Where he wants to go for a Ling Lurker for Lud. Potentially try to bust that natural expansion. Sooner rather than later, Lurker Tech being upgraded. Phoebus, without a lot of scouting information, this scan is going to be absolutely critical. And let's see if he scans the right location. Kind of waiting for... He does scan and he sees it. 
sees Lurker Tech, sees the Hydralis is even moving right now. That is going to give him room to potentially defend against this. Lifting off that barracks, building a bunker preemptively on that front door. A Zergling already there to potentially try to create some harassment. It looks like it's just going to cost it its, its life more than anything. And Phoebus actually... Yeah, moving forward on that ramp to engage anything incoming. Engineering being built another... Like a handful of barracks. So he's going to have plenty of troops to potentially engage this. And Rancor now with a, a Sun Colony in his front door, maybe upon getting scanned, might want to opt to play a little bit more defensively. Phoebus getting super aggressive, though. Moving his troops out to engage midfield. Scouting, actually, the, the 3 o'clock location. And Rancor still just sitting off three hatcheries. Adding a Spire now. So upon that scan, he's going to try to switch it to Spire and play the game from there. So early early mind games here. Thebus sees that there's no third at 3 o'clock. If there was a Lurker Flood, it would have come. Second scan catches the natural expansion, sees the Sutton Colonies now. And Rancor are going to try to take the 6 o'clock. Hydalus being presented. But Thebus has to be scratching his head right here. And this is interesting. I think Rancor intentionally trying to let this SCV scout see the Hydralisks that are potentially out on the field. The Medic Marine's now moving forward. Two sunk colonies on the front. Fortunately, Rancor are going to be donating Hydralisks as a result of this. So Thebe is kind of calling his bluff and getting some free Hydralisk kills in the midst of it. Lurker Aspect is there, but there are no Lurkers currently. And right now, Phoebus able to get position on that natural expansion. I don't think he's going to dive into it with those two something colonies there, but he's already got a good en enclosure. But a bunch of Mutalists being hatched. And potentially... Yeah, picking away at that Overlord. Potentially... Are there turrets? There are no turrets. So Rancor might have gotten away with it. With the lack of scan... And a counterattack of Mutalisks. The turrets are not there to help defend this natural expansion. Not a huge amount of SCVs killed, but now the micro starts the natural expansion. The Marines trying to get back to the front. The Zergling engaging and delaying there a little bit. But now we have eight Mutalisks, level one weapon. So an interesting counterplay from Rancor, showing one thing, switching to another. And catching Thebius off guard in the midst of it. This is going to allow him to establish his third. He's not yet grabbed a third gas, though. This does tend to be a weakness in Rancor's play. His ability to transition between kind of a mid-game all-in. He's moving up with some Zerglings. So, yeah, he wants to end the game now. Producing a lot of Zerglings as a follow-up. Compside over the corner. He does have those Mulus potentially pinned in. The Mulus now actually backing out. <coughs> So a lot of Zerglings have been produced. There's more Mutalists on the way. He might want to wait for level 1 weapons. A lot of these Mutalists have been very damaged. But let's see if this... Yeah, this Medic Marine army has been caught. Certainly the Medic's going to lose their life. Well, maybe not. Thief is very rapidly able to re-engage. Level 1 weapons now just finishing. We have five barracks in the midst of this. A factory and a starport. So Thebus, I think, easily able to handle early game. More hatcheries being plopped down. And a sunk colony as well. No third gas from Rancor still. So he wants to just try to get it on, done on tier 1.5. And honestly, I think Thebus might have a backbreaking army before level 1 Mutalisk weapons finished. He's got to engage very carefully. And this is what I was expecting. Counterattack here from Rancor. Diving into the main. The Marines, this is a large enough attack force to potentially bust this. Third Sunken Colony not there yet. Some Zerglings flooding to try to buy some time. The Mutalist is actually coming back to home base. With the Marines, one Sunken Colony down. Second Sunken Colony down. The natural expansion potentially breached. The Mutalists are now arriving though. A drone or two being wiped out there, but Phoebus' army getting wiped out. This is what I meant by early game aggression on both ends. The Zerglings wiped out. The Medics... Or sorry, the, the Medics getting wiped out by the Zerglings. Still a good amount of Mutalists in the air. But isn't enough to breach. 
He just lost an attack army. More Zerglings funneling out. Six o'clock base, still no third gas. So Rancor looking to, once again, be in a punish uh, punishing position, potentially. So going up, peeking at the third, denying that currently. And now finally, morphing some lurkers somewhere out in the field. SCV dying to the something colonies there at the 6 o'clock location. So now Rakwar sitting back into kind of his standard play is like, okay, I'm going to have an overwhelming amount of attack forces here. Deny that third. Make it so you can't kill me. And I'm going to macro up behind it and try to make my way towards the rest of the match. It looks like it. Never mind. He's getting lurker aspect now. He canceled it previously upon getting scanned. That's what happened in the midst of those exchanges. Thebus, I don't expect him to, to take this lying down. He's too aggressive a, a, a player for that. And critically, the Science Vessel is going to be out before not too long, which is really going to mitigate Mutalisk play. So Rancor, in a minute or two, might be in a bit of trouble where he's having to deal with the Radiates and Medic Marines pushing out in the field, and he doesn't potentially doesn't have enough Lurkers out in the field to contend with what Thebus is throwing at him. Lurker Aspect just now finishing. Hive Tech being upgraded. Third Gas has now been grabbed by... Rancor, but Phoebus marching out on the field. This Overlord potentially going to sacrifice its life. The Mutalists and Zerglings regrouping. Diving into that natural expansion. Radiate is not researched. There are Firebats there to help engage this. And the Medic Marines for Thebus, yeah, being pulled back to home base. Bunker down, the Marines and Medics wiped out there. And it looks like the Zerglings and Mutalists are going to be able to get all the way up into the main. They're going to be able to get some SCV kills in the midst of this. Looks like they might be able to. However, once this is cleared up, this is all of Rancor's standing army. Phoebus looking to turn around. Does he have lurkers? Okay, grabbing another sunken colony here at the 6. A bunch of sunken colonies on the front. It's going to be a ways... So he's got to, to weather things. Phoebus, with a large standing army, big supply lead... Going to be able to catch some Zerglings before they're able to run out midfield. And the Science Vessel count off the double starport is going to grow fairly rapidly. And this is going to be an opportunity for Thebus to move into that mid-game. Some Lurkers planting up on that high plateau. Siege Tech being upgraded. So Thebus again showing that aggression. He wants to press into this in the mid-game. Scourge out. Thebus not able to defend it. That was a huge... Shift. Able to pick those initial two science vessels off. Siege tank moving forward. So th we got three gas, we got hive. But does Rancor have the room in the midst of all of this to go ahead? Looks like he's plopping down an additional evolution chamber to get that tier three tech that he needs to survive in the midst of this. Siege tank now grouping up, looking to pin into the six o'clock location. Some Zerglings trying to cut off reinforcements. The Science Vessel sees that Thebus engaging rather well on this back corner. Just testing these edges. Now able to get an Irradiate off of one of those Lurkers. A 9 o'clock base being grabbed. The SCV nearby might be able to see it. Not sure that Thebus is... It's going to take a long time to breach this. Adrenal upgrades there. So these Zerglings going to be all the more deadly. And a Greater Spire upgrade. For Rancor. Not sure if I like that play. So 6 o'clock base slowly being pushed into. Phoebus, in the meantime, up to 5 barracks. Continuing with the tanks. Get, is producing a BC and a dropship. I like the dropship in the midst of this because there are a lot of soft points to be able to push through this. Phoebus slowly pressing in. And this is... Rancor's weak point, trying to get an Ultralisk Cavern, but he oftentimes has a lot of trouble transitioning into the late game, trying to run up, but very quickly getting wiped out. 9 o'clock base is there, not yet mining, but he has no map control. The 6 o'clock steadily being whittled down. And we got a dropship moving into the main. Looks like it is being fairly easily cleaned up by Zerglings. Oh, never mind. Being redropped. 
We also have Guardians morphing in over the natural expansion to potentially do damage there and force this attack force back. The drop in the main looks like it's going to pick off some Overlords. This is a lot of tech that needs to be defended. Firebat, Medic, and everything else in the midst of this. The Zerglings looking... Opting to try to engage here. I'm not sure I like that play. Hydralis just walking down, getting wiped out there. And the Guardians now moving into Thebus's natural expansion. So, attacks absolutely everywhere. So, Rancor basically down to two bases. Thebus down to one base. SCV's pulling off the line. Completely evacuating there. Another drop moving to the natural expansion. I don't know that Rancor has enough to defend all this. So, he's going to try to move in to the 6 o'clock. Deny the natural expansion, which might be successful. Also denying the main. Some Ultralists have managed to get out on the field. Some drones being picked off. Rancor's drone count dropping. However, a BC looks like it's going to be able to deal with the Guardians there. And a third base has managed to get established from Thebus. So action absolutely everywhere on the map. Zergling's finally running in. Maybe cleaning this up. And it looks like Thebus taking a commanding lead after all is said and done. Able to wipe out gas here. The Ultralists are able to clean things up at the main, but it's 35, very low worker count for being so late in the match for both players. But he's able to wipe out mining at two bases. Rancor still having to deal with this. Finally able to get in, maybe deal with these Medic Marines. And Thebus already floating a command center out to the 12 o'clock location, so he's keeping on top of his macro in the midst of this. Double the supply currently. So Rancor had, and I love this pocketing with the Medic Blockade. That's going to make this, it's going to be a long time before the Ultra is able to breach there. Still a Marine at the 6 o'clock, poking away at the Evolution Chambers. Some Scourge up in the air to potentially deal with the BC, but the BC got all of those Guardians, and that dropship still in the air. So Thebus, in the midst of this, going in for another counterattack. So things have finally been reestablished, but that was a lot of delayed mining type for Rancor. 12 o'clock base is up. Looking to move in with those Zerglings. Another drop at the main. A lot of critical tech. Rancor needs to respond. Drones getting wiped out there. And Phoebus, again, I love this style of play. Continuing to apply the pressure. And just not letting anything stop him. Ultralis... Rancor not responding to that, instead opting to just dive in with his troops into the natural. No full carapace upgrades, and there's GG from Rancor just realizing, yeah, he's just getting outmaneuvered everywhere. Main gone, natural expansion completely thinned out. Phoebus on four bases, great play. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Game one in this best of five going to Phoebus. Thanks for listening.